administration. A law firm in Boston. Some 2,000 miles from Hollywood, writer Kay Alden is just as obsessed with the young and the restless as the Bells. I appreciate you looking out for me. Oh, okay. I'm going to get out of your car. I know you're busy. Hey, wait a minute. By 7 a.m., she's already written for two hours and is checking a tape of her work. It suddenly seems that there was A big no part of the fulfillment of this kind of career, this kind of writing, evolves from seeing your words come to life. Kay, her three children, husband, two full-time helpers, and assorted relatives... Mom, you might take a minute and see if Elsie Ann wants to give him some bread. ...filled the entire 25th floor of a Chicago high-rise. The nerve center is the desk in her office. Oh, I'm in the best of all possible worlds for a working mother. I have this consuming job that I adore. Mm -hmm. And that it, you know, mm -hmm. takes hours and hours and hours every day. But mm -hmm. I am at home. Much of the day mm -hmm. is spent in conference calls and in meetings. But any available time always goes into writing. You know, any snatch of time you get, uh, uh, you're doing something involved with the job. I don't go to the elevator without a script. Did you call for a breakdown? Kay's been a soap opera addict since she was a little girl in Kansas. You have both halves of Act Two. Research for her PhD uh, dissertation yeah, 15 years ago brought her to Bill Bell. The rest, <laughs> as they say, is history. How do you get the ideas for the stories? You're like a little sponge and you, you, uh, you, you hear people talking and, and being a storyteller, you know, you very much get drawn into what is, that, what is that story. Or you catch little snatches of conversation and you find yourself making up a story to go with the little snatch of conversation that you heard. Maybe it's something that has to do with being sort of a frustrated performer. Uh, because, it, you know, it's really the optimum opportunity to do all these characters. I mean, you don't really get to do them on stage, of course, but you really... Can you do them for me now? Do Victor. Oh, let's see. Do Victor, do Victor. Uh, um, one of my favorite sequences of all time is the one that, you know, that aired, that aired today when he finally got his revenge. He's looking at Jack, and the eye contact is, is very intense. Um, Jack said... How much did you buy? I bought enough, Jack Abbott. Enough! Now! I say was because they just got divorced. But Douglas Austin, who's a family friend, is now trying to get them back together again. <laughs> Good luck. It turns out that Nikki, who's a former stripper, is now being wooed by Dr. Jim Granger. Granger, of course, is Cricket Blair's father. And Cricket's mom? That's right. She's John Abbott's new wife. Skywatch, another exclusive on TV 13. It's 1.30 p.m. Going to Newark, actually. And Scott Baker, an actor on General Hospital, How about an autograph for my wife? Oh, sure. arrives at Los Angeles International Airport. Well, I'm going to see about 150 of my closest friends. Oh, yeah? In, uh, in New York. It's having a lunch at the fan club lunch. I've had a lot of people tell me that it could get a little intense. Careful, don't get too close. You know, like I'm going to see some wild animals at the zoo, but I think it's going to be great. It's a lot of work. Money comes in, you have to keep an account, a ledger. When Susan Manning and Carol Dixon talk soap opera devotion... They're coming from Canada, they're coming from Indiana, they're coming from all over. They're talking business. They are partners in a company that brings soap opera fans and stars face to face. I had a girl coming today from Charlotte, North Carolina, and she can't make it, but she wanted to know if she could just send flowers to the restaurant. So. And That's devotion. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like you're really his friend. I, I, got, I have two jobs just to support my luncheon. I watch every day. I won't miss a day. I just put out over $1,000 for the Emmys for the 29th. 
I enjoy the soaps. I, it does it for you. Yeah, th this gives me my high. You know, when people go out on the tennis courts and sweat for three and four hours and, you know, are aching all day and <laughs> the next day, I don't have any pain from this. All I have is enjoyment. And, <laughs> good, you know, good. and smiles on my face. Some people might say, these people are crazy. Why are they doing this? Basically, it's the same as, you know, when they had the, uh, the Beatles following and the Elvis Presley following. Oh, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Oh, it's just a different group and a different fad. A fad that has loyal soap fans. He plays Alex on Days of Our Lives. Following their favorite stars. I want to go slap him. <laughs> from one personal appearance to another. It's addicting. <laughs> Our lives aren't that exciting. But not all soap fans are couch potatoes. One, one. Deep left center field. Why is it? Loving. You talk about loving? Talk about as the world turns. Among those estimated 60 million so fans who tune in at least once a week are members of the Cleveland Indians. I started off the, uh, the morning watching Young and the Restless. Uh, came on at 11 o'clock. Turned from there to <laughs> Days of Our Lives, which came on at 12. Left Days of Our Lives and went into another world. Nah, what happened after another world? I think I went, yeah, I went into Santa Barbara. So I got a, got a chance to watch four before I came into the ballpark there. <laughs> That's a lot of potential customers for fan club entrepreneurs like Susan Manning and Carol Dixon. Hi, Scott. Hey, hey how, how are you doing? doing? <laughs> I'm not getting any money for this, am I? No, no. Nope. No. Nope. Welcome to the first annual Scott Thompson Paper Fan Club Luncheon. What are the fans looking for? A piece of peace. Yes. Yeah. A smile, a handshake, yeah. a picture, a kiss. That's what this fan club luncheon is going. They're going to go home so happy that they got to touch him or to have a picture taken with him. He's gorgeous. I can't wait to meet him. Which doesn't make Jack or Ashley or Tracy, for that matter, too happy. So Derek Stewart, in the midst of all this, is trying to strike up a relationship with Cricket. That's fine with her because her last romantic interest was none other than Scott Granger, Dr. Jim Granger's son. But that relationship hit the rocks because of one small problem. Turns out that Scott and Cricket were half-brother and sister. Are you ready for the following afternoon of sick and warped perversion? Yes! yes! Beautiful. Okay, now set up for the next scene. Ready, roll the ready, fight up on camera, one shot, 50. Playing University, episode 19. What's happening at UCLA these days is a regular soap opera. No one is going to believe you guys. They'll believe me. Now, this is a scene back here where the police chief is also what? A, a drug kingpin. Drug kingpin. Right. The police chief is the drug kingpin. Right. They love me in this town. Nobody's going to confuse this with Othello. No. Wonderful. Okay, Charlie, I'm staring back at your bar. University, the soap, airs on campus TV and is written, produced, directed, and performed by UCLA students. I haven't had much experience. Experience is preferred, but not necessary. The Young and the Shameless. It revolves around a fraternity that has an inner circle that is um, sacrificing young co-eds on campus so that the president of the fraternity can resurrect his dead father, who was a priest back in Salem, Massachusetts, from the grave. You get credit for this? Yeah. You know the part where you, you, you killed Stu in the hallway? and then Mitch Watson was an actor on the soap until his character went into a coma. Wouldn't it be better if he just walked in and held at the door? So he did the only logical thing. He became a producer. You're going to sacrifice Kirsty and Charlie. Okay. 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 You're a little bit, but don't go crazy. Don't bug your eyes. You know, just don't go psycho on me. You know, don't do that. Traditionally, we think of a university as a place not only of higher education, but of a certain finer Mm -hmm. education. Is that a fair assumption? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a fair, especially UCLA. The better schools, right? Mm -hmm. And here you are at UCLA making soap operas about Satan worship and bulimia. Hey, hey, slow down on those cookies. I just bought... I'm sorry, when I get tense, I eat. And what? 
drugs. And drugs and um, pornography. Pornography. Oh my God. <laughs> Nikki Storm is <laughs> Nikki Spencer. Oh no! And rock and roll and bisexuality. Listen, there's no man anywhere that means as much to me as you do. Even ones with radio shows. All the things that make up a good college. I mean, this soap opera goes to every limit it possibly can. And that's why I like it, because it's, it's warped. It's Molly just... Bryan and Jason Reed are university students and actors in uh, university. Well, I had a bed scene with uh, a woman who's playing my girlfriend, who I also have sleeping with, Charlie. Thanks. <laughs> she slept with me, and then five minutes later slept with him. How'd you feel about that? Uh, I ended up killing her. So. <laughs> How am I coming into this? Where am I coming from? So, what is their motivation? Art for art's sake? The sheer yeah. love of drama? I mean, you can Those smile because you're so evil. You Maybe, but they're also getting a higher education at this university about the realities of television. And what if you were to do, uh, you know, Hamlet instead of uh, some crazy soap opera? Oh, that'd be great. Um, I don't... It would be great, uh, artistically speaking. It would be great for us as actors, but right. I don't think we'd gain the audience. Charlie? University, by the way, is in its third season. You are wonderful. Really? <laughs> and it's on cable at nearly 400 colleges around America. Hello? There's some things I gotta tell you. About the killings and about the break-in. And I find him in his apartment. Jeff! And he slit his throat open and there's satanic yeah. um, symbols all over the wall that he wrote with his blood. Um. Well, how far are you willing to go in your university soap opera? <laughs>